What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Ninth Doctor, Christopher Eccleston story, Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways. It is the finale for Series 1, the original, well no, not the original Series 1, the original new series, Series 1. It's getting very confusing with the, you know, the new Season 1. But anyway, we're talking about the Christopher Eccleston season. Um, and yeah, it is the final it is the finale for series one, the two part finale. This is the last time we'll be doing a review on a ninth doctor episode. So that's very sad, but we get into the 10th doctor era next, which I'm very excited to be going back to for God knows how many time, um, like the 10th time, probably. I don't know. Um, so yeah, bad wolf parting of the ways, big finale, a lot going on. Let's get straight into it with the cast. Christopher Eggleston as the ninth doctor. He is wonderful in this one. Of course, his final, performance as the Doctor on screen so far um, and I, I don't think he's going to come back to be honest um, you know there's a lot of political stuff going on with all that I just don't see him coming back at this point even if you know things do change you know management changes I mean management is the people that he had issues with um, are now mostly back in the show again so I, I don't see it ever happening to be honest but um, yeah, Christopher Eccleston does fantastic in this episode. He is so, so good. Um, he's been amazing throughout this whole series. He is one of my favorite Doctors, even though he's only he only did one series. He's so good. I mean, he's the Doctor that pretty much started it off for me. I watched a couple of classics uh, when I was younger, but it was series one with Christopher Eccleston that properly started my love for Doctor Who. And he is in my top five, probably top three Doctors largely because of that i love him so much he is awesome in these two episodes not really much else to say it's just yeah last time we're going to be talking about him billy piper as rose tyler of course we get another series of her next time out and then a few appearances later on as well but in this one yeah she is a very good here as well she takes a very pivotal um role i guess in this whole story especially in parting of the ways um, the final episode, and yeah, she's really, really good here. Um, there's some things with her character that I think, you know, I ha didn't realize quite so much until watching these back with reviewing them, how kind of whiny and whingy Rose actually is. I mean, I knew she always was, but until watching this back with my partner and my partner going, she is such an annoying bitch. Like she really just whines and whinges. And yeah, um, I didn't quite realize how much she actually does that until here. And of course she does it a lot in the parting of the ways where, you know, she gets sent back to earth and she basically has a meltdown. And although on one side of it, you can understand it at the same time, it is a bit like, wow, just kind of get a grip. You are having just a real bitch here. But um, yeah, Billy Papa does a great performance. And also we've got John Barrowman as Captain Jack Harkness in his final kind of main companion sort of episode. Of course, he leaves at the end of this story because, spoilers, he dies but then gets resurrected and gets left behind. Um, and yeah, we see him pop up later on here and there. But he's he's great here as well. Um, really, really good stuff for him. Yeah, not really much else to say. Let's get into this one. So we start with Bad Wolf, the Doctor in Big Brother, and Rose in Weakest Link, and Jack in whatever he's in. I don't really understand what it is that he's in. Um, I understand. I know Weakest Link. I know Big Brother. I don't know what Jack's thing's supposed to be. I think it is supposed to be some sort of, you know, reality TV thing, but I don't. I don't know what it is, um, and it isn't really mentioned. I don't think exactly you know by name what it is but um yeah that whole thing now I see a lot of people have an issue with this being quite dated now and I can see it in some ways at the same time though Big Brother's still a thing isn't it maybe not in the UK anymore but there are definitely big I mean I know Australia where I live uh we have Big Brother going on maybe not at the moment but we've had one like last year uh, maybe even this year so Big Brother's still a thing in the world Weakest Link I don't know if Weakest Link is still a thing. Um, it might be, it might not be, but I mean, I can understand how this does, you know, date the episode quite a lot. But personally, I don't really mind it. I'm, I'm fine with it. People die in the games. Now, later on, we find out that people don't actually die in these games, although where they get sent to, they might as well, they pretty much die later on anyway. But, you know, the initial beam doesn't actually kill people, but that is initially what we think is going on. I think it's an interesting premise to bring up. It's really dark, you know, it's like, oh, these fun games, especially when the Doctor, you know, 
rocks up in Big Brother and he's just like, oh, what the hell am I doing? Why the hell am I here? He's all nonchalant about it. And then when that first woman gets, um, gets you know, disintegrator beamed, he's like, what the hell was that? And his, the, his face and how he kind of lifts himself up off the couch after just leaning back all like, oh, what the hell is this stupid shit? It's a complete change of mind. And, um, I mean, Rose has it as well when she first is there doing The Weakest Link. She's laughing. She's singing along. She's oh, having a great time. And she's like, I just voted for this person because they got the questions wrong. And the the woman starts, you know, begging for a life. And Rose just like, it's just a game. Like, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm not going to vote for myself. It is just a game. And then the woman gets disintegrated. And then it completely shifts. I love that tonal shift. The broadcaster is called Bad Wolf. So that's, of course, Bad Wolf. It's the name of this episode. And it is also the the ongoing kind of Easter egg throughout this series. And yeah, Bad Wolf Corporation is the name of the of the corporation, the station. Um, and that, of course, comes up later on as to why that is, why that has all happened. But it's definitely, you know, at this point, it's like, okay, things are things are really coming together with this Bad Wolf thing that we've been hearing about throughout the whole series. The controller is a girl hooked up to wires who kind of yeah, controls all the stations and, um, you know, is in charge of everything that goes on here. So it's fairly, we don't get to know a whole lot about who the controller, you know, who she was beforehand. Um, I think there's a, a line briefly that mentions like she was just found or something when she was a little girl and then hooked up to these wires and we don't really know why. Um, so, and I like the, the mystery of that, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd done like a big finish of her, her story or something, but, um, I like that it's at least in the show, um, it's, you know, we don't really know what she was, who she was. Um, yeah, it just, it makes it, makes it quite interesting, especially once she, um, she turns against her masters in the end and it, you know, it's, it's all, all the, all the pieces of the puzzle start coming together. The disintegrator beam is actually a transporter. So this is where we find out that it's not killing people. It's actually transporting people because what happens is Rose gets killed in her game. Um, then, uh, yeah, she gets killed in the weakest link. She loses and gets disintegrator beamed. And then, but then Jack, once they go up to floor 500, finds out because he manages to, the TARDIS is up there. He goes in the TARDIS. He manages to figure out that this beam isn't killing people, it's transporting them somewhere. They don't know where at this point, but he knows Rose isn't dead. Well, Rose most likely isn't dead. She's been taken somewhere. She might now be dead afterwards, but she's been taken somewhere. She's not initially dead from that beam. So that's a really good revelation. The controller set this all up to wipe out the Daleks. Okay, here is maybe, I don't know, maybe an issue I have with this episode. I don't really know. So I like the whole thing of the controller. Obviously, you know, she's hooked up to all these wires. She's obviously got something crazy going on there. She basically set the whole bad wolf thing up. Well, not necessarily the bad wolf thing, but she set up, you know, she brought the Dr. Jack Andros to this, to all these games and to the station because she wanted to defeat the Daleks who end up being the villain of this story. Um, so she's kind of, she's in the whole thing and she, you know, she ends up getting taken by the Daleks once they realize what, what, um, what what she's they once the Daleks realize what she's done and they kill her, um, but she's like I caused your destruction. I love that scene. It's great. Um, it's it's just a really good scene. My only issue is okay. So obviously they tried to disintegrate a beam the Doctor in Big Brother, but they didn't kill him because he's like somebody obviously wants me here. So that's why they're not using the beam on me. But then Rose does get disintegrated beam. Now maybe it was the fact that you know obviously. Integrated beam doesn't kill people. They didn't do it to the doctor because, well, if he gets stuck on the Dalek ship, then he can't do anything to save anyone. So that's why he doesn't get it done there. But then they still let it happen to Rose. So it's a little bit, I mean, I guess the controller somehow can see into the future and can see what's going to happen. So that's why it all happens. I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit funny, but yeah, the doctor's speech at the end. So that's when he finds out that Rose is with the Dalek and he's like, I'm going to rescue her from the Dalek ships. I'm going to wipe every last stinking Dalek out of the sky. I'm coming to get you and turns the screen off. Such a great cliffhanger. Um, yeah. Oh, great end to this episode. On to the parting of the ways. First of all, we have the Emperor Dalek. I loved 
the Emperor Dalek. He is so cool. He's massive. He's got a super deep voice. You can see the actual Dalek kind of being inside kind of the glass tube thing underneath it. Um, it's just really cool. I really like the Emperor Dalek. The Daleks were created using humans, which has driven them insane. So another interesting thing here. Um, so I guess it the the teleporters, the disintegrator beams teleporting people to the Dalek ship, I guess then means that, yeah, they're still alive, but probably not for long because then they're getting turned into Daleks. Um, and these aren't pure Daleks. Now, that's an interesting thing for me because I'm like, well, we have this whole thing. And I mean, we had it in Dalek where, you know, the Dalek was being mutated with humans, you know, it got mutated with Rose and it could no longer live anymore because it wasn't a pure Dalek. These are also not pure Daleks. They're literally using humans to make Daleks. So I'm a little bit, and they're going insane because of that, fair enough. But usually when we see Daleks being mutated away from what they initially are, they cannot bear living, so they just all die and kill themselves. So the fact that they don't here, they're going a bit insane, yeah, but they're not. You know, it. I feel like that's a little bit of a plot hole there that I didn't really think of before. But yeah, every other instance, Dalek, it's not a pure Dalek. We don't deserve to be in this world anymore. We're not pure Daleks. These aren't pure Daleks, but they're, they don't seem to care. The Doctor tricks Rose into leaving. So another very heart-wrenching moment, but a great moment where the Doctor, he makes it feel like, oh, you know, I've got this brilliant idea of how we can do this and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, uh, Rose, go into the TARDIS, hold this lever. I'm just going to go out and do this. He runs outside, he stops. And then that slow look back as he lifts his sonic screwdriver, closes the doors and sets the TARDIS away. Brilliant scene. So, so emotional. Um, yeah, it's it's perfectly acted by Chris Freckleston. Like, that it is amazing acting. To just switch like that, oh, it's so good. The Doctor's hologram speech, another classic moment. This story is full of classic moments. When, you know, Rose is in the TARDIS, the hologram comes up of the Doctor. He starts talking to her about, you know, I'm facing an enemy that cannot get hold of the TARDIS, and I'm probably dead already, so you need to, you know, you're getting sent back to Earth. Let the TARDIS die. Get on with your life. Have a fantastic life. And that whole scene, when he turns to Rose, and he doesn't sound like he's coming through a computer anymore. It just sounds like him talking. Have a fantastic life. It is such a heart-wrenching moment. It is pure Doctor Who. Lydia's death with the silent exterminate. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember what I thought of this episode when I first saw it. You know, when in Bad Wolf, Lydia's like, oh, I could come traveling with you. And the Doctor's like, yeah, that would that would be nice. He basically says, yes, you can come traveling with me. Um, back in the day when I was, you know, six years old watching this, I probably didn't realize, didn't think, oh, she's going to die. Um, nowadays, if I hear some, you know, this, especially if there's a current companion still around, and a new person comes along, and within one episode, it's like, I'm going to come traveling with you, and the Doctor accepts, you're almost, it's almost certain they're going to die. <laughs> they're not going to make it through. Sure enough, that's the case, but Lydia's death is heartbreaking. The way she thinks she's safe, but then the Daleks come, they fly outside, and they shoot the glass, and, but when they say exterminate, but you don't hear it because it's behind the glass, you just see the eyes light up as if to say exterminate, and then the scream, oh, it's, it's another heart-wrenching moment, but it, it's so well done. Rose opens the heart of the TARDIS and returns to the Doctor. So the monumental moment, you know, Rose is back on Earth. She has a little tantrum, which, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I can understand how where it is in the story, and it makes sense, but it's a little bit too, oh, we're having another tantrum again. Um, and that happens again in, well, Christmas Invasion, to be honest. A um, bit of a tantrum there and a bit of, oh, look at me, oh, I'm annoyed. It's one trait of Rose that I don't love, to be honest. But um, yeah, and then she figures out that she's got to open the TARDIS because the whole thing in Boomtown of you look into the TARDIS, you make it think what you want it to think, and then it'll, it can help you out. Um, sure, it's a little bit like that's quite convenient and, you know, whatever, but it does have consequences, so fair enough. Um, I'm okay with it. And yeah, they eventually get the TARDIS open with the truck, that I thought was a lovely scene when Jackie comes through and she's like, I got this truck, don't ask me where I got it from, just get this thing open. Um, and Mickey is so like 
done with Rose at this point that um, he's like, well, I'm just going to help as well because you don't want to be here. You don't want to be with me anymore. So I'm just going to help you out because what else have I got to do? The Doctor can't destroy anything. The coward scene, another brilliant scene when he's going to blow them all up, but it's going to kill him. And I think it said it's going to blow up Earth as well. Um, and the Daleks like, the Emperor Daleks like, what are you, coward or killer? The Doctor's like, coward any day of the week. I love it, especially considering everything he's gone through recently with the Time War. Of course, at this point in the show, we don't know the exact specifics of what happened in the Time War, but now looking at it, it is a almost like-for-like -like situation of, you know, the moment with the button. It's almost, a, it's a very similar situation. Um, so looking back on that now, it improves it even more, and it's such a good scene. Rose is the bad wolf. She destroys all the Daleks. So that's what Bad Wolf was coming to. It was her. She scatters the, the things through time. The TARDIS gets into her head. It makes her super, super crazy. It's a little bit questionable as to how that works, how her looking into the TARDIS makes her into basically a superhero. But um, I'll, I'll let it slide. It, it's, it's cool. It explains the Bad Wolf thing. She destroys all the Daleks, but then it's going to kill her too. And in the end, the Doctor has to take the Time Vortex out of Rose into himself, um, then back into the TARDIS. But ultimately, you know, he's taken in a lot of this stuff and he can't get it all out of his body. And that is going to force him to regenerate. So that whole thing, the sacrifice that he makes there is so good. And it's a, a fitting, great end to this Doctor and this episode. Finally, of course, we have the Doctor regenerating. I love this regeneration, you know, the Ninth Doctor going on about, I was going to take you to so many places and all this sort of stuff. Maybe I will, but I won't like this. Not with this daft old face. I just, the, a great speech at the end there. Um, and the regeneration into Day of Lieutenant, the whole Barcelona thing. It's awesome. All right, a bit of a longer review there today because it is a two-part finale. A lot to say in this one, as you would expect, um, being the end of a Doctor's run as well. So a rating out of 10. Well, I mean, it has to be a 10 out of 10. It is an amazing episode. Um, I don't really have any issues with this one. Like I said, the whole thing, I think the main issue people have with this story is the fact that Bad Wolf is a bit dated. Other than that, people seem to really like this one as well. Um, and I don't quite, the, the dating, the datedness of Bad Wolf doesn't really bother me that much. So, I mean, Bad Wolf itself, maybe not quite a 10 out of 10, but Parting of the Ways for me is an easy 10 out of 10. It's such a good episode and it boosts the whole thing up to a 10 out of 10 for me. It is such a good finale. One of the best finales of New Who, um, for sure. And yeah, it is a pretty easy 10 out of 10 for Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.